Hello everyone and welcome back to Folly Wasteland Warfare, my settlement playthrough with the settlers of New Hope. And we're going to start, we're going to jump right in to the settlement phase. We actually have 200 caps to play with, but for once I am remembering that we should do the explore card first in case the explore card gives us a reason to spend caps on something else. I do have in mind, I've, I've got the, uh, the sheet here just off camera, uh, I do have in mind... 150 cap spend I think so we have 50 to play with potentially which means we could buy another explore card actually But we get a free one because I bought the ranger outpost So I'm just gonna cut the deck and we'll say we're doing this one Whatever this is Let's put that back on there Broken steel Broken beyond repair the tesla power armor may still contain salvage is that the faint hum a faint hum coming from the armor rummage through it to take 20 caps or trying to take the Tesla Coils mod. There is no point in me taking the mod because I don't have any Enclave power armor to install the Tesla Coils on. I don't have any power armor in general if it is uh, for any power armor. I think it's only for the Enclave stuff. Enclave, Enclave, whatever. I'll take the 20 caps, I guess. <laughs> sure, why not? 20 caps, that puts us at 220 caps. I want to buy another stores which is 150 and that means we can take two items into battle and for this battle that we're doing today I'm going to take the hunter's hunting rifle and the incendiary assault rifle uh, I'm not sure who's going to use them yet we'll go over that when I go over who we're using but yeah we're going to take that we're going to store the sim pack and the self boy that leaves us with what that leaves us with 70 I think I'm going to bank the 70 yeah I think I am quest 9 if you want to make an omelette for a win, 200 caps. For a loss, 120. Quest overview. Leave Mirelurk eggs alone for long enough and you'll have to contend with what pops out of them. They start small, sure, but get bigger and more dangerous pretty quick. With that in mind, you've been hired to deal with a large cluster of eggs by a farming community. Best do it quick in case the thing that made them is still around. So you will have just seen the quest overview for what our hapless band will be doing today but let's just quickly cover their equipment because it's relevant to one of the special rules that we're going to apply to this mission that the incendiary assault rifle was brought along. So we've got the Soul Survivor Loner, he's got the Lone Wanderer perk, he's got a 10mm pistol, machete and he's got the hunting hunter's hunting rifle given to him. Dogmeat Scout, just a dogmeat bite. Pennyworth the Mr Handy with just his buzzsaw and flamer. We've got the scavenger with a pipe wrench and a bolt action pipe pistol. We have the settler with the pipe wrench and she's been given the incendiary assault rifle. And then the free tech with the combat shotgun that never lands a hit. So here is the ruined city section that we'll be traversing through deployment. It's going to be orange in from this side down here. And our goal is simply to destroy the three clusters of Mirelurk eggs. One, two, three. Now, special rules because they don't actually have any stats. Regarding how to smash them, you have to smash them in close combat, they have one health, no armor, unless you have a flame based weapon like a Molotov cocktail, an incendiary assault rifle, a Mr. Handy Flamer, then you can do it at range because the fire spreads and you're sure. Otherwise you can't be sure unless you get right up in their face and smash them. So have to smash the three egg clusters. There is one Mire Lurk hidden behind the barrels there, and then there's three hatchlings here. We're going to have, I think, four turns, maybe five if I'm overzealous with only giving four. If I had both Mire Lurks on the table, the other one isn't ready yet, sadly, probably would have upped that turn limit. If you have a Mire Lurk Queen, you could definitely go like super hard mode if you want to copy this mission type, but give yourself like at least a couple of extra turns because otherwise you'll have no chance. So we have to destroy three eight clusters. You can do it at range with flame weapons, have to be close combat otherwise. The Mire Lurk will not respawn. The Hatchlings, however, will. They only have three health I think with one armor so they're pretty easy to take out but as long as there's at least one egg cluster it'll pop out another hatchling assuming one has died. So any one time they can only be three max but the egg hatching, uh, eggs will hatch more until they are destroyed. So we can't just sit back and fire twice every turn kind of like last time gotta have a little bit of forward momentum otherwise we're not going to get it done in time. There's a few searchables though there's one there there's one there there's one there, and there's one there. Could be danger, could be not. I'll get my team set up, and we'll be back at deployment. All right, Team New Hope has arrived on the map. Soul Survivor and Dogmeat down here in the corner. The Scavenger, Settler, 
and Pennyworth right here in the middle. Freetex on the side there, and I do have a plan for that. There is a reason for him being over there, not just because he smells. He hasn't changed that loincloth since he was enslaved by Supermunes. It can't be good. And based on number of miniatures, it will be the Marlock Hatchings and Marlurks going first. However, one thing I forgot to mention, for going the normal AI rules for both enemy types, they are going to aggressively defend the nest, essentially, the, the eggs. They're going to aggressively try and keep us away from those. It was the Mirelark hatchlings on the right that got the game started. Whether they're moving or charging, they move yellow. So he did just that towards the closest target, because again, they're being aggressive. So he came around the corner there and is bearing down on my poor free tech who I just insulted. I'm going to activate my settler first. She moved forwards yellow as well. Put her right smack dab there. Now, because she's using that incendiary assault rifle, her range isn't as good as normal, so I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Uh, her, her base range on the incendiary assault rifle is red, but the Mirelurks are actually just in there, so for her other action, she is going to shoot at them. And at that range, with the incendiary assault rifle, it is black, blue, green thrown in, and it's sixes. That is a crit. She destroyed its only armor. I don't know if the bottle cap sets it on fire. Let's quickly check by coming around here. Nope, you need to get a star. It does base two damage though, and the Mirelurks have three, so it did live, but it took two damage. Next up for the AI was the Mirelurk hatchlings on the far left, and it also just double yield moved. So remember that because they are respawning at the top of every turn if they die, that's the reason for the super aggressive rule for them getting up in the face. It makes it harder to just walk past them, to ignore them because they could just attack from behind if you do. If you kill them they spawn at the front. So hopefully that balances out making them super aggressive, the fact that they respawn. I activated my free tech next and initiated phase one of my cunning plan. Besides Dogmeat, he is my fastest teammate. He moves red basic, so he double red moved, he ignored the Mirelark hatchlings and he is just gunning it up the, the flank there. Now that might mean that the Mirelark itself goes after him if he's the closest target. Uh, the Settler might be closer, I hope, but either way it kind of gives him a straight line up to the eggs there, although he doesn't have a fire base weapon so he will have to get into base to base. Well, the tough guy on the table, being the Mirelark, is just lying in wait because Random Chance decided the last hatchlings would activate first, and they charged. One move put them within charge range, because again, move and charge for them is just yellow. So he has successfully charged the Settler, and Random Chance also noted he'll be taking a black die in his charge bonus if he gets attacked next turn. Well, I'm going to try and deal with that problem immediately. The Scavenger activated, and from where he started, red charge range, he could make it into combat. It's a little awkward at that angle but he has made it in. So he's just using a pipe branch, so normally that would be just the yellow die, however outnumbered bonus green, and for his charge bonus he's taking a black die to try and kill this in one hit. He needs fours or under though, so it's not great. And he failed with a quick action, which is a shame because it would have killed him. What can he do with a quick action that might be relevant? A prepare? Probably not going to be relevant, sadly. So very sadly for the free tech, he was the closest target to the Mirelark, and the Mirelark is just going full frothing at the mouth, aggressive. Yeah, his charge range is red, but thankfully that was still not enough to make it this turn. So he double moved, and he is bearing down on the poor free tech. That is the last enemy activation though, so I still have three to go. Simple enough activation for the Soul Survivor, he just moved forward yellow twice. Next turn he'll be able to nab that item on the way past. Dogmeat came around the corner and decided to charge into the hatchlings that were moving in there because I think if two or three of them piled on the same person, they might actually hurt them. So he's going to distract them by tying them up there, which just leaves Pennyworth. So Pennyworth actually has a charge range of green and I opted to go after the hatchlings that are wounded because I think he can get an easy kill on them with his buzzsaw. Normally buzzsaw, just yellow die, throw in the green with a charge bonus and it'll be sixes. He, he got a crit as well, broke the one armor they have, the fault does two damage. So these hatchlings are gone, but they will be back. So really it should be the top of the next battle round this happens, but I'm just going to do it now when we draw the event card to show what happens. One Mirelark hatchling got killed, it comes back, randomized between the eggs, one, two, three, four, five, six, and it opted randomly to pop back out right there for turn two. And with that, we can pick a random event card. We're going to do this one. Acidic Air. Models cannot share items or use battle cry. Not that I ever do. Doesn't affect robots or models wearing power armor. Okay, it's just one of those acid rain showers that everybody loves in the wasteland. 
So battle round two, sadly, the Mirelurk is going first, and it has his sights set on the free deck. So he charged, he's right in there. They have Mirelurk Claws, which are a black, yellow, green normally. Also, they do extra damage on a ball cap. Uh, throwing in another green for the charge bonus, and they are fives or less. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. One extra damage, one armor broken. I think the free tech has one extra armor when he's a free tech. Uh, let me just see here. Yes, he is. Oh no, so yeah, it is against physical. So he's got one armor. Where's the armor die? There it is. One armor. Oh, he blocked it. So he blocked the bonus damage, and its base damage is just one. So he took one damage. That could have been a lot worse. So I think for my first action to free up the Settler, I'm going to go with the Scavenger, who's on the left of those two. He's going to swing his Pipe Wrench twice at the Mire Lurks. Uh, so it's just normally yellow, green for outnumbered bonus, and it is fours? I just looked and I forgot already. Fours, yeah, fours twice. First one got through with the crit, entirely smashed the armor, so that is just two damage. It's got one health left. Is that a seven or a one? Seven comes down to a six. Sadly not, so it's alive on one health. So lucky for me it was the newly spawned batch of hatchlings that activate. Two yellow moves, gets them right there, but not close enough to engage with dog meat as well. So I really don't want this hatchling to get a goal with its charge bonus, so I'm going to activate the settler. She's going to use her pipe wrench. Her skill is worse though, she needs threes. I really want her to get it on the first hit so she can move. That would be an absolute no, so let's uh, try again. <laughs> Oh, come on. She was off by one. Arg. So next up for the AI is the hatchlings engaged with dog meat. And when the hatchlings attack, they just roll a green die and nothing else. But they have a similar rule to the rad roaches where for every two health they have rounding up, and they start with three, uh, you get another attack. So for each one attack, he's actually getting two. So he's attacking four times, but he needs fours, was it? Yep, fours. Fours. Yep, first one got through. Dogmeat's armor is two. He can block the damage fully. Oh, how much did he do? They absolutely do one. So he did fully block the damage of the first hit. Here is the second hit from the first attack. That got through as well. Dogmeat. He blocked it. Oh, he also had super armor, but that's gone now. I totally forgot to mark that. Either way, second, well, first attack of the second action. Oh, they're just landing all the hits. Thank goodness the armor rolls have never mind. He took damage. He's taking one damage. And then the other hit. That one didn't get through, finally. Okay, apparently the hatchlings roll pretty well. So I activated the Soul Survivor next, and he did stop in base to base with this after first move action. So he's flipping this for free, but then he's moved over there, which is why he's over there. What did he get? He did find an item, but also a danger card, so I'll go look those out. All right, here are the cards. I just took a random assortment of the billions of item cards that exist again, so we'll pick at random. We'll also pick at random for the danger card. We're going to pick here. He found this. The quick and the dud. The glint of metal turns out to be an NCR artillery shell stuck nose first in the ground. The dud must be safe now, right? Place a ball cap marker under this model to show location. The next model making a move longer than orange anywhere within this takes two damage from an immediate explosion. So I'll just, I'll put an icon right next to it because he stopped right there after his first move. He didn't actually go here because he has to be in base to base. Okay. And then the item he got for doing that, I don't think anyone is going to go near there, but... Oh, that's ironic. <laughs> he found a bottle cap mine. Interesting. Well, the last hatchling that I tried to take care of couldn't. He's going to attack. And because he's wounded, he isn't getting the double attack proc. So, but his first attack is getting a charge bonus. He engaged with the Settler, so I'm saying that's who it's attacking, and it's fours. That's an eight, so thankfully it missed. We lose the charge bonus, so it's just the... Oh wait, it's a green die. Yep, the black die was the charge bonus, almost. Fours, he did get through. He broke her only armor, so he does deal one damage to her. So once again, I have a few activations to go, and if I have any hope of killing these eggs in four turns, I'm going to have to mosey. So Pennyworth activated and double red moved. I forgot that he was pretty quick too. So he is ignoring the danger that the free tech is in and his friends in order to try and actually win. So let's see if Dogmeat can take out this hatchling brood in one smack. Extra black die thrown in for the charge bonus. Sixes. It went through, broke his one armor and did one extra damage. He actually did just one shot them. Which might be a bad thing because that means it's going to respawn up by the 
eggs. But he has another action, and I think he's going to... Hmm, he didn't get a quick action there, did he? No, because he could have charged with a quick action and then got another attack off. Uh, he's red range. He could run that way. He could run that way, or he could just initiate a charge. Keep them locked down so it's one harassing me next turn, not two. Yeah, I think he is actually going to... He's just going to charge his other action, and he'll take a black die again because it gives him the best chance at being able to take a Marlock Hatchling out in one shot. So last up is the free tech and I want him to break away. So the Marlark gets a free smack at him at minus two. So it's, he's needing threes, but he is rolling good dice for it. Let's see what happens before I decide what to do next. He went and landed the hit, didn't he? And for, is it per bottle cap he does extra damage or just if you roll any bottle cap it does one extra damage? Let's have a little look live and see if we can work this out. It just says like bottle cap equals one extra damage. I don't know if that's cumulative because if it is, he's done three damage, which is a problem. Um, I, I don't know. I've never seen this situation before. I guess it's extra damage. Let's let's say it's extra damage. So he's doing three damage. The free tech has two armor. I just dropped the armor die and it was a two. So he blocked two and took two actually because I forgot there's an extra damage there as well. That's three plus it does one. So if he was not a free tech, he would be dead because he only has three HP normally. Thankfully. For being a free tech, he has plus one, so he's living on one health. Oh, and of course I did forget, because he's alive, he has another action, and he's charging into base to base with that egg cluster. So as the second battle round ends, one Marlark hatching, hatchling brood is respawning, and sadly for the free tech, again random chance, one, two, three, four, five, six, they popped out at the one he's in base to base with. So if they activate first, it's very likely they'll kill him before he gets a chance to do anything in turn three. But either way, we have an event card to draw, so let's come down here. Once again, I'll cut the deck there, and we're gonna do this one. Churned land. The constant NCR artillery shell. Oh, we've got synergy. Shelling, oh, with the danger card, has churned the ground in the region whilst the downpour lasts. It makes it muddy and hard to progress. The first movement of each model on ground level is treated as difficult terrain, so they're one less range than normal. That's that's annoying. At the end of the round, roll blue to see if it remains in play. Okay? Well, lucky for the free tech, it's not the Marlark Catchlings over by him that is activating, it's actually the ones engaged with dog meat, and they're at full health, so he's getting hit four times again. And that is if I've just looked again. Fours! Fours, first attack. It got through for one damage. Oh, he didn't block it, did it? He's got two armor. So that's one damage on dog meat so far. Well, two if you include what he's got already. There's another hit through. He blocked it that time. Third attack. Nope. Wait, 987, nope. And fourth attack. Nope, thankfully. So all in all, he only took one more damage. Could have been a lot worse. It is the free tech's time to shine. He's going to he's going to make use of the improvised weapon rule, which is just something everyone can use if they don't have a melee weapon. Which is just you're attacking with something. You picked up a rock, whatever. It normally is just a single green die. He's getting an extra one thrown in because he charged last turn, and unfortunately, his combat skill in close combat is a three. But hopefully, these green dice help it land threes to destroy the egg. Nope. His second attempt will lose that additional green. He just needs to land one damage. Come on. Was that two nines in a row? He deserves to die. Oh, and die he will, because it's the hatchlings next time they activate. They are full health, so they're getting four attacks. Let's see what happens. It's through. It breaks one armor. He's got one armor left. Nope. It killed him. <laughs> Blah. That's exactly what he deserved. So that Marlark Catchling will now just move towards the closest threat, which would be Pennyworth. So I guess they'll just come over this side of the uh, the eggs and go there. Well, sadly, he's just going to have to ignore that item there, but if you want something burned right, you have to do it yourself. Pennyworth is moving up, and then he is using his Mr. Handy Flamer to burn this pile of eggs here. It's just the skill die plus blue for a chance of fire. That doesn't really matter. All that really matters is he rolls a six or under. Thank goodness for that. I think that actually did set it on fire, but it's irrelevant. He deals default damage, which is two in range orange around it. Uh, uh, no, that's, that's outside of orange. Either way, though, the first cluster of eggs have been successfully popped by his flamer. So it was the third hatchling group to go next. However, I did forget 
When Pennyworth moved, his first movement should have been one less because of churned ground, even though he flies technically, but whatever. I've moved him back slightly, he still would have been able to reach range red with the flamer, so that doesn't change, it's just he's slightly further back than he was before. Anyway, this hatchling swarm here, with the damage no longer getting the charge bonus, attacking the settler again. So it's just its basic attack, and it's only the once, or once twice. Uh, that does hit. Where's the armor die? I've lost it again. Where is it? There it is. She blocks it, I think. No, she only has one. The, the scavenger has two armor. She didn't block any, so she took one damage from the first hit. So that's her up to two. And the second one's through as well. She blocked it, because they're only doing one damage. So she's, two, she's up to two damage in total. That churned land might have screwed me. The soul survivor is moving, but obviously, again, difficult terrain for first move. And then normal move. Puts him in base to base with the egg cluster. As long as Pennyworth can get the other egg cluster, I will win on turn four, which I, I did say was the final turn. Uh, if something goes wrong with either of those two, I think it's just over because I don't think anyone else can actually get close enough to help. Last activation for the AI was the Myra Lurk, and it just scuttled back the way towards poor Pennyworth right there. Alright, just down to my activations again. Let's see if Dogme can take out this swarm with his charge bonus. He insta failed. Charge bonus goes away, I guess. Can I can I choose not to attack? Because I kind of am okay with him keeping that cluster there. Because he's not going to be able to help. Yeah, he's going to say that's good and end his turn, I think. So because I don't really want that hatchling swarm to die either, the scavenger is not doing anything with his turn. The settler is going to break away though, so it gets a free hit. Twos. Thank goodness for that. So she's moved there. The reason I'm doing that is she could probably move once and then do a long range so shot with the assault rifle that has fire on it. So that might be a last minute save if needed. And that does take us to the end of battle round three. So there's no respawning Meyer Lurks this time. See, all three of them have been dead because there's two egg clusters. Only two could respawn max now. I didn't make that clear in the, the opening. Either way, we have to roll to see if this stays in play. It almost rolled off the table. It was a nuke, so it does not. And because it has to be a star. And then uh, we'll just go here and say this is our event. Lurking fog crawler. We saw that last time. No one is within red of any of the battlefield edges, so it doesn't do anything. Actually, he might be. Hang on a second. Oh, you got lucky. Alright, he's good. Into the final round. So it's actually coming down to the wire here. I, I was worrying I was making it too easy on myself again, and here we are at the final turn. Might not be able to make it. First activation, though, is the Meyer Lurk hatchlings that are attacking dog meat. They're still full health, so they get to attack four times. Needing fours. First attack, missed. Second attack, missed. Third attack, missed. Yeah, because it came down to a five. Fourth attack, it got through for one damage, which he blocked. All right, that, that's good. All right, no joking around here. Pennyworth is activating first in case he gets locked down by the Meyer Lurk and the hatchlings next to him. He is burning that cluster up there with his flamer twice. Basically just needs to get a six or less on one of these rolls. Did it. Thank goodness. Second cluster of eggs. Pennyworth MVP so far. Two down, one to go. So I know Pennyworth had another action incidentally, but he would have had to move to see the final cluster, so it doesn't really matter in regards to that. I guess you could argue he might be able to shoot over the rocks, but I'm choosing to say that he can't. Uh, it all comes down to winning or losing on my next activation, so... This is fairly irrelevant, but the Marlurk activated, he is charged into Pennyworth and he's going to smack him good. The extra green die is for the charge bonus. And it's sixes or less, but that's fine because seven comes down by three. One extra damage, no bottle caps for even more damage, so that's three coming in, I think. No, he's one base, that's why he can do so much extra damage. So it's two damage coming in against Pennyworth, and he blocked two of <laughs> it. I was just making sure that was going to roll that way. Uh, yeah, he has three physical armor. So actually took no damage. So it just comes down to whether the Soul Survivor can use his machete to hack up those last eggs. So we might as well just keep filming and see if he can. The machete is just a uh, black and a green. He technically charged them, so I'll take another green for the first attack. And he needs... Oh, he's good. I keep forgetting he's so good in close combat. He's a seven or less. It's an eight that didn't come down by anything. Oh no. Oh no. Seven or less. That I saw the X, but it rolled when it hit the side of the wall and became a crit. With two extra damage, no less. So he actually just did three damage. The Soul Survivor has destroyed with his machete. I'm going full Jason. 
and taking out the last cluster and giving us the win barely. So by the skin of their teeth and minus one free tech, they did actually make it. So that means it's time to roll uh, for what the choice of quests for next time is. We're running out of options at this point. Still gonna roll though, it's the fairest way. Nine, we just did nine, this was quest nine. 10, we've done 10, I think that was the Brotherhood one. 11, we've done that one. Five, we've done that one. The dice rolled off the table, it landed on a five, as previously stated. Ooh, we've done that one, apologies. 10, done that one. Come on now. 10, we've done that one. It was gonna roll off, but I stopped it and it was on a two. So first choice is gonna be two. Stop rolling 10. Done four. Almost rolled off again. And that was gonna be a six. You know what, I'm gonna take it. So quest two and quest six, let me check those. So your options for next time are two options that have been previously been available and did not win the vote. Quest two is the Psycho Sniper. So mention that if you wanna see that next in the comments. Or if you'd like to see quest six, that is the worst defense. So if you want to see that, let me know as well. Thank you very much for watching the video. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. We'll hopefully see you a bit sooner for the next one than this one because I had to paint up all the Meyer Lurk stuff. So hopefully not as long a wait for the next part, but do remember to get your vote in as early as possible to make sure it counts because I film in advance. Thank you and ta-ta for now.